that allows you to communicate with the components of the Linux kernel. The kernel is the heart of the Linux operating system. A shell script has a series of commands that perform tasks. You should use a shell script for automation. Learning shell scripting gives you the confidence to work on the Linux environment irrespective of your role, whether you're a system administrator, a user just using a software, a person who doubles up as an IT engineer, or even an enthusiast exploring the world of automation. Learning the scripting concepts in this course would help you to learn lucrative languages such as Python. You're going to learn scripting in the Bash environment. Bash stands for Born Again Shell. Consider it to be an interpreter that translates your language to a language understandable to the computer. The setup. The easiest setup is having to install the Bash subshell on your Windows 10 operating system. The setup this course follows is a combination of Bash subshell and Oracle VM virtual box with CentOS or Ubuntu. You may also like to use cloud services like AWS or Google Cloud to create Linux instances in a Jiffy. Under no circumstances, you should use your office resources to learn. Thank you. Hello and welcome to the section introduction. In this section, you will learn creating a user on Linux platform, learning about user configuration files in the bash shell, system configuration files in the bash shell. So let's go. Creating a user. To create a user, log in as root and use the command user add. User add minus m minus d the home directory minus s to define the default shell slash bin slash bash and the name of the user done be in the root and create a password for the user ruby using the command pass wd ruby After changing the password, check if an entry has been added to the passwd file. The passwd file is a text file. You should not open any file on the Linux operating system without checking its type using the, using the file command. File slash etc. This is the location of the passwd file. The file command takes the type of the file, such a path that starts from slash etc that travels from the root slash to its subdirectory etc is an absolute path. The result is an ASCII text and hence you can check the content of the file using the less or the cat command. But we intend to see if the user ruby is registered in the passwd file. In modern offices or corporate networks, system administrators do not keep the list of users on a single system. They may even have a Windows Active Directory that is keeping such, such a database. To check if the user Ruby is registered, use a pattern searching command called grep as follows. grep ruby slash etc slash passwd. The output of the command grep ruby space slash etc slash password provides you with the following information. The x here stands is a password indicator. The real password is stored in the slash etc slash shadow file in an encrypted format. 1001 is the user ID. The second 101 is the group ID. The home slash ruby is the home directory of the user ruby and bin slash bash is the default shell of the login ruby. Let us log in as ruby and try to corroborate the information that we have just learned. su ruby. Okay, so to learn the username we use the command who am I. To check the user and the group IDs, let us clear the screen. We use the command id. So you see the user ID 1001 
and the group ID is also 1001. Let us check the value of the home variable echo The home variable is pre-assigned and so is the shell variable echo. The shell variable is also pre-assigned, an excellent value to check if you are troubleshooting in an environment which has different shells. The environment here refers to a company or an organization. Now that we are logged in as user Ruby, let us find some information using the command ls-al. The minus A flag shows the hidden files and minus L is a long listing. The files that you need to know and have very relevance in the bash scripting world can be grouped together as configuration or initialization files and they are dot bash underscore logout, dot bash underscore profile, and dot bash rc and that's all user configuration files in the bash shell you are traversing dangerous territory here the difference between the user configuration files such as dot bash underscore profile dot bash rc and dot profile are nominal if at all the dot bash underscore profile and dot bash rc relate to the bash shell only while dot profile is read by other shell types as well. When a user logs in, the dot bash underscore profile is read. This is called the local configuration file because the first file that is read is the slash etc bash underscore profile or in some systems it is etc slash profile. These two files apply to all the users in the system. So let us look at the dot bash underscore profile, which is the local configuration file. The first line and the third line are commence, the fourth line which reads as f starting square bracket minus f tilde slash dot bash rc and the bracket close semicolon then. This particular line means this checks for the existence of the dot bash rc file in the home directory. The tilde symbol is a sign for home directory. The minus f is a file testing operator which becomes true only when it finds the .bash rc file in the home directory and then it executes a block of code. The block of code here is dot space tilde slash dot bash rc file. If the minus f operator finds this file, then the script is executed from the home directory. The first dot executes the script dot bash rc. The line number 8 is a comment. The line number 10, which reads path is equal to dollar path colon dollar home slash dot local slash bin colon again. The colon is the delimiter dollar home slash bin. This is a pre assigned path variable. The values of the path variable make it easy for the kernel to find the executable binaries in the directories and subdirectories specified in the path variable. For example, the executables in slash home slash bin can be invoked by just typing their name. Note the presence of slash home directory, which is also a pre-assigned variable. The twelfth line is export path. The export command makes the path variable available for the child shells. You would learn more about the child shells, which is a very important concept. Since the dot bash underscore profile executes as soon as you log into the system you can check the environment variables in the current shell and the command that you use is env command env quite a long list and that's all for now thank you 
Hello and welcome to User Configuration Files in the Bash Shell Part 2 Lab. In this lab, you add a simple code in the .bash underscore profile file and check how it behaves. Step number one: Add the code. Let us open the .bash underscore profile file in VI. Adding the code. Echo. Hello, Ruby. I am in the dot bash r dot bash underscore profile file. Close it. Save file. Log out and log in again. So I am ready to log in again as Ruby. So you see the code has been executed. You can also log in on the fly. Let us add a variable. A variable is a placeholder for a value in the memory location of your system. You do not need to log out and log in again. Add the variable hello is equal to world, where hello is the name of the variable and world is its value. These local variables are added to the bash shell. After adding the variable statement, check if the variable is available in the current shell. So let us open the file again vi.bash underscore profile this is the code that got executed now we have to put hello this is the variable name is equal to world save the file okay we are back let's clear the screen and let us check the value of the hello variable you merely get a blank value. You can run the dot bash underscore profile again in the following manner and get to see the value of the hello variable. Dot dot bash rc. Okay, so let us check the value of the hello variable. Echo hello. And you see that the value has come quite correctly. Thank you. Hello, welcome to user configuration files in the bash shell part 3. The dot bash rc file is also similar to dot bash underscore profile file. The main purpose of using the former is to inherit the values in the child shell. Let us try and perform this exercise as a lab. In this lab, you are going to find out how dot bash rc works. We define a variable called sky in the dot bash rc file with the value blue. Let us open the dot bash rc file from the home directory. Let us add the variable sky is equal to blue and save the file. Let us check if the if we can see the value of the sky variable echo sky. As you see, there is no immediate impact. But when you start a child shell by typing bash, the dot bash rc file is executed by the shell, and the value of sky is clear to you. So we open a child shell. Let us check the value of the sky sky variable. Echo sky. And that's how dot bash rc works. Thank you. Hello and welcome to system configuration files in the bash shell. The profile file. There is a file called profile in the slash etc directory. To access the etc directory, you need to log in as a privileged user, that is as a root. 
The file profile is one of the first files that is read when the user is logging in, after which the user's customization files like .bash underscore profile and .bash rc files are read. In this lab, you add a variable to access the internet using a proxy server. Since accessing the internet is a requirement for all users in an organization, it is efficient to automate the settings for all the users. Of course, you can email all the users, but many may just ignore the mail or set it wrongly. So to reinforce the setting, which enables the users to access the internet, you can make use of the slash etc slash profile file because anything you put in this file is read by the users logging in. So the first step is login as root. Open the profile file, which is in the etc directory. Quite a long file. So we add the setting export HTTPS proxy is equal to 8080. HTTPS underscore proxy is the variable name and its value is 8080 at the server proxy. The export command sets the variable HTTPS underscore proxy for all child shells. So we just save and come out. Now what we need to do is log in as an ordinary user and check if the variable HTTPS underscore proxy is available for that user. So we are ready to log in as an ordinary user, Ruby. Let us check the environment, if that particular variable has been set or not. env grep http https underscore proxy. So we see that the variable that we set in the profile file has been set for this user. Thank you. Hello and welcome to System Configuration Files in the Bash Shell Part 2. The topic is the Bash RC file in the etc directory. The Bash RC is the equivalent of the .bash RC file in your home directory. It also stores aliases and functions, but the settings are applied system wide. There is another advantage of the Bash RC file that you can use in your environment. Any executable script that you create in the slash etc slash profile dot d directory is executed for the login shell. Let's see. We are already logged in as root. Let us go to the slash etc slash profile dot d directory. etc slash profile. Let us create a script. The name of the script is first.sh. Insert. We put the command interpreter. And a echo statement. Hello, I hope I am executed through the slash etc bash rc file. Just save the file, give executable permissions, execute permission x to the file. Let us just check the content of this file again. Now, what we need to do is uh, uh, log out and log in again as an ordinary user.
Hello, I'm back again. I'm ready to log in as an ordinary user. Ruby. And you can see that, hello, I hope I'm executed through the etc bash rc file. So we can see that the executable file that we put in this etc slash profile dot d directory has been executed by the bash rc file. Thank you. Hello and welcome to section introduction, elements of the shell environment. In this section, you learn about standard input, output and redirection, variables, how to execute scripts, terminologies, combining commands, command substitutions, jobs, difference between quotes, aliases and exit statuses. Thank you. Standard input output. Consider the file num.txt. This file or the content of this file becomes standard input to a Linux program like less or cat. So the basis of input for the Linux program is known as the standard input or STDIN. What you see on your terminal screen that is not an error is known as standard output or STDOUT. If you provide as standard input the name of a non-existing file to the Linux command cat, you get an error message. This error message is known as the standard error or STDERR. Thank you. Hello. The topic is redirection. The symbol less than sign transfers the standard input to a Linux command. The symbol greater than transfers the standard output from the terminal to a file. You have practical uses for this symbol in troubleshooting. For example, when you want to save the system parameters in a file. Now it's time for lab. In this lab, you will learn about the redirection symbols greater and double greater sign. If you have troubleshooting network issues, you may want to create a shell script that gathers information about the system. The unm command provides system level information like the architecture of the system. Now, the standard output of the command is redirected to a file called info.txt. But if you want to gather additional information in the same file and use the greater than sign, the old data is deleted. Hence, the symbol greater than greater than is used for appending the information in info.txt. I'm using the IP command, which gives you the IP address of the system. Greater than greater than info.txt. Now, let us check the content of info.txt. We should have the output of both the commands. So, this is the output of the unim command. And this one is the output of the ip space a command. You have learned to redirect the standard output to a file using greater and greater greater than sign. Thank you. Redirection part 2. You may redirect standard error messages in the bash shell using two greater than and two greater greater than symbols. Let's perform a lab. Perform a ls minus l command on a non existing file. You get an error message ls cannot access 0.txt, no such file or directory. This is an expected output. Now, redirect the error using greater than symbol to a file called error.log. Let's see what happens. You still see the error message. The redirection is obviously unsuccessful because greater than symbol is for standard output and this is standard error. Trying the same operation with the 
2 greater than symbol yields the correct result. We don't see the error message now. Let's check the content of error.log. So this is successful. You can append information to log more standard error using the symbol to greater greater. Thank you. Redirection part 3. The symbols ampersand greater than and ampersand greater greater can redirect both the standard output and standard error to a single file. Let's do a small lab. Your directory should have at least one existing file for this lab. Perform ls-l on an existing file along with the name of a file that does not exist. So this is the existing file and let us do ls-l on a fictional file. Let's see how ambassador greater than sign helps us putting these two outputs into a single file. ls-l 0 And no file.txt ambassand greater than this is the output file and you see that both the standard output and standard error must have gone to test.txt let us check the content of test.txt there you go the output of test dot txt shows that it has consumed both the standard error and standard output held by the redirection symbol ampersand greater than sign to append to the same file use greater than uh, sorry ampersand greater greater thank you variable a variable is a location in your memory that is assigned a value that is either temporary or permanent in scripting your environment variables play an invaluable role for example, the home variable gives the location of your home directory. The home variable is a preset variable. The value of the home variable is slash home slash Lisa. Many third party applications check the value of the home variable to store your work files. Imagine if it were not for the home variable, your data would be stored in some random location or the software would ask you for the location. To set a variable, you have to use the equal to assignment operator to specify the variable and its value. For example, a is equal to 100. Check the value using the echo command, echo dollar and the name of the variable, which in this case is a, and you see that the value is 100. This is an example of a shell variable because the value of this variable is not available if you open another shell called a child shell. If you want to create a variable that is available in both the parent and the child shell, you must create an, an environment variable. So let us do a small lab. In this lab, we will try to prove the limitations of the shell variable. Create a variable called Bobby which has the value Melbourne. Checking the value of the variable Bobby. Quite right. To know the PID or the process ID of the current or the parent shell, it is possible to do so by checking the value of a special variable called dollar dollar. Echo dollar dollar. Note down this number 3430. Now open a child shell by typing bash. How do we know that this is a child shell of the previous parent shell? You can check this by looking at the value of another special variable called PPID or parent process ID and the value should be 3430, the value of the variable dollar dollar of the parent shell. Echo PPID. You see the value is 3430. Now 
When you set the shell variable and open a child shell, the value of the variable you set in the parent shell is not inherited, as you can see by checking the value of Bobby, which in the child shell returns nothing. Let us go back to the parent shell by using the command exit, clear the screen. While being on the current shell, you can use the unset command to drop the value of the variable. So let us set another variable. Jen is equal to New York. Let us check the value of Jen. That's quite correct. Applying the unset command, unset Jen. Let us check the value of the gen variable and you should have nothing. This is how you unset a variable. Thank you. Variables part two. The topic is environment variables. To ensure that the values of the variables survive child shells, you need to define environment variables. Let us execute the steps in the following lab. Defining an environment variable called year using the command export, you must use this command to assign values to an environment variable. Checking the value. Let us open a child shell by typing bash. Let us see if the value of the variable year has been inherited in the child shell. As you can see, the value is now inherited. This is what you call an environment variable. If you want to check all the environment variables set by you or the system, use the command env. So let us go back to the parent shell and execute the command env by piping it to less. Pre-assigned variables. There are environment variables that the system has already created for you. Here is a list of the most common variables. The home variable. Applications look at the variable's value to store your data or even log files. The mail variable stores the value where your mail is pooled. The path variable, any executable file residing in the directories listed should get executed from any location on your system. The shell variable shows the shell you are using, whether it's the bash shell, the corn shell, c shell or the z shell. Thank you. How to execute scripts terminologies. In the earlier sections, we learned about the path variable. The path variable has, in its value, various directories of your Linux system. If there are executable files in those listed directories, you can execute them from any folder on the system. But there are methods by which you can execute files without relying on the path variable. So let us do a small lab. The title of the lab is executing from the current directory. Go to your home directory and create a file using vi. Insert, add a piece of code, echo, hello world. Save the file. Give the file execute permission using the command chmod plus x name of the file. Please remember the dot symbol denotes the current directory. The executable must be present in the current directory. You must check if the file exists using the ls-l command. So we know we have just created this file. Let's clear the screen. So to execute the ex1.ch from the current directory, enter the command dot slash ex1.ch and you get the result. Here, we know that the file exists in the following directory. To execute this file from any directory on your Linux system, 
irrespective of where you are, you should use the absolute part, starting from the root. For example, root, home, Lisa, eight, hello world. Thank you. Hello. Combining commands. In this class, you will learn about three control operators and how they use to execute commands. The first control operator is semicolon. If you are using semicolon to combine two commands, the second command runs irrespective of the failure or the success of the first command. Ampersand, ampersand. If you are using ampersand, ampersand to combine two commands, the second command executes only if the first command executes successfully with exit status of zero. Double pipe. If you are using double pipe to combine two commands, the second command executes only if the first command fails with exit status of non-zero. Remember, error is always non-zero and success is zero. Let us do a lap using the semicolon operator. When you use the semicolon operator, the second command runs even if the first command does not error out. So let us create a small file using the touch command and ls minus l hello we are doing ls minus l on a existing file called hello echo the file hello exists since we are using the semicolon operator both of these commands will run as you can see, this is the output of the first command and this is the output of the second command. Now, because the very nature of uh, the semicolon operator, even if the first command fails, the second command will run. Let us try. Non-hello does not exist. Echo. As you can see, both the commands have run. This is the output of the first command, which is a standard error, and the second command. Now, let us do a lab using the ambison ambisant. Uh, this is on expected lines, because the first command is successful, then only the second command will work. Using ambisant ambisant, echo hello. So you see the output of the two commands here, the first command here and the second command. Let us make the first command to fail. Ambassad, Ambassad, echo, hello. As you can see, the first command has given you the standard error and the system has stopped processing the second command. So this command has not executed because of the very nature of the Amberson Amberson operator. Clear the screen. Now we will use double pipe to perform a lab. This is an exact opposite of the Amberson Amberson control character. Here the failure of the first command is imperative for the second command to execute successfully. So doing ls minus l on a non-existing file. using double pipe as you can see the first command has given out a standard error which means that, that it has failed to execute which is why the second command has run thank you command substitutions there are two ways to implement command substitutions in the bash shell Command substitutions are a necessary part of automation. The output is used in innumerable ways in the scripting. The two ways are using backticks and dollar bracket command bracket close. Let us perform a lab with backticks. In the example, the output of the command uname minus m 
is used in a single line script executed in the prompt. The UNM minus M gives you the architecture of the machine. Let us write the script echo the architecture of the machine is I'm using backticks now. Backtick is not single quotes. Closing the backticks and closing the statement with double quotes. You see that this has been substituted with its output. Clear the screen. Let us do a clap with dollar bracket command bracket close usage. In the following example, the output of the command is used in the script to determine operational time. The command which I am going to use is uptime minus s. So let us try and use it in the single line script. Echo the CentOS system has been operational dollar bracket the command with a flag minus s close the bracket and close the statement with double quotes you see the substitution has been successful thank you difference between single and double quotes an area of confusion even amongst experienced Linux user is the usage of double and single quotes. Both double and single quotes treat the text strings inside them literally. But if the text string enclosed in double quotes encounters a variable that is already set, then the value of the variable is displayed in the output. So let us do a lab using double quotes with variables. The double quotes honor the variables if they are set beforehand. Let us check this statement. Echo. The president of the USA is, this is a variable. As you see, the value is blank because I have not set the variable called president. So let me set the variable called president. And run the echo statement again. So as you see, if the double quotes encounter a variable which, is ha which has been set beforehand, it will do the correct substitution. Let's clear the screen. One interesting thing is that double quotes also on a white space. For example, echo dollar double quotes hello space Andrew yeah, you see that the white space has been honored in the output. Let us do a lab with single code. Single codes do not honor the value of the variable. And this, this is the major difference. The value of a variable holds no meaning for the string enclosed with single codes. For example, let us define a variable. Feminist. Rosa. We can check the value of the variable feminist. So let us write a small uh, statement and try and see if uh, and quote it with single quote and see if uh, the substitution takes place or not. Echo dollar double quotes dollar feminist was a great thinker oops sorry i have used double quotes you can see the difference between the double quotes here and the single quotes the single code has absolutely ignored the variable while the double code has honored the variable. Thank you. Jobs. A program can execute both in the foreground or in the background. For example, demons are such programs that run in the background. They provide certain services to the clients.
You can stop the process by typing Ctrl plus Z. Labs, understanding jobs. You can use the sleep command. Here the sleep command waits for 50 seconds and with Ctrl Z you can stop the job. Start the sleep command with 50 seconds. This job is in the foreground and not allowing you access to the prompt. Sleep for 50 seconds. A cursor stays there until 50 seconds have passed. Let us key in Ctrl plus Z. The job has stopped and one that you see in square bracket is the job number. You can use either the FG or the foreground or the BG or the background commands along with the job number to manipulate the process execution. If you use the FG command, you do not get access to the prompt until the remaining seconds have passed. As you see, the job has now finished. Let us try the experiment with the BG command. Sleep 50 Control Z. If you use the BG command, you instantly get the prompt back while the job is running in the background. BG, stop. The number, the job number is one. You get the prompt immediately. But the sleep space 50 or this command is running in the background. Why invoking any tool when you are in real life situations, you can use the ambassant to put a program in the background. This is what happens in the real world. Thank you. Hello and welcome to the topic aliases. Aliases are glorified window shortcuts. In practical terms, you employ aliases to create shortcuts for long Linux commands. The system creates default aliases which you can see using the command alias minus p. You see some grep and ls commands with long flags and options shortened to words of few alphabets which are easy to recall. While it may be difficult for some of you to understand right now, it is necessary to ask this question. Where did the shell get the default aliases from? Well, you touched upon bash rc file earlier. Now it is time to expand the knowledge further. Let me clear the screen. When you log in, the bash rc file which resides in the slash etc directory is also executed. But when you open the slash etc slash bash rc file, you would not find any alias commands. But there is an interesting block of code in the bash rc file that should give you a clue. A block of code from the slash etc slash bash rc file. Look at the code carefully. This code would execute each file in the directory whose extension is .sh. The condition is the file should exist and be readable. You can see that from the code if space square bracket minus r space double quotes dollar i square bracket close then. If the condition is met, then the loop construct would apply the variable dollar i for each file with the extension .sh in the etc profile.d directory and execute them as you can see from this code piece dot space double quotes dollar i double quote close here the dot stands for another form of the source command when you use the source command on a script the variables and other elements are inherited in the child shells. Now it is time to check the files that are executed through the code block in slash etc slash brush rc file. Let us go to that directory slash etc slash profile dot d. Now you see all the .sh files which get executed due to the code block that we had shown you. If you run the grep command to search for aliases in the slash etc slash profile dot d directory, then many of the files have the alias command in them.
grape grape minus i for case sensitiveness alias dot sh now you can see these are the very same aliases that you see in the alias minus p command this is the reason you see the default aliases in your profile when you log in and execute alias minus p command you can also create your own alias commands if you work on windows and linux in a heterogeneous environment you may have confused the clear command which is clear on linux and cls on windows so why not create an alias like alias cls single quotes clear here yeah. but this setting is temporary to make it permanent to make it permanent open the dot bash rc file which is in your home directory and add it there another common setting is to create an alias for the notorious rm command with the flag minus i so that when you delete a file you are asked to be sure sort of a verification and that's all for this alias topic thank you exit status all Linux commands return an exit status and from that status you would know whether the command is successful or not. You can put the exit status in your script as well to control the flow of the script. For example, to predict errors or take actions against such errors. You can deliberately use a certain exit status to make changes on how a client software, for instance, requests services from a server instance. There are 255 exit statuses. The zero shows successful completion of a command or a piece of code or a script, while any non-zero value is unsuccessful. To know the exit status of a preceding command, you check the value of a special variable called dollar question mark. Now, time for labs. Performing a ls minus l on a file that does not exist in your current directory yields an error, the standard error. ls minus l check.txt. Check.txt is not there in the current directory. So you get an error. Now check the exit status using the command echo space dollar question mark. Any value that is not zero indicates failure. If you do ls minus l on a file that exists, let us create a file. Let us do ls minus l on this file. Okay, then we have got a successful command. Let's do echo dollar question mark. And you see the value 0. The exit value is 0, indicating that the command is a success. Thank you. Bash shell expansions. The shell is an interface with which you communicate with the system. Here the word system refers to the kernel or the heart of the Linux operating system. There are entities in the shell that store values. These entities can be variables and or parameters since they also store values. The values must be exposed or take on new values. This is called expansion. A sort of a journey from holding the value to the result of exposing or expanding the value. The term you would often hear is token. A token is a symbol that has a value attached to it. Variable expansion lab. You have already touched upon the subject in this section or in this lab, you learn variable expansion using curly brackets. Create a variable called day and give it a value 4. Let us check the value of the variable day. You can also use the curly brackets to get the same result. This is optional, but you can add 
additional strings after the curly brackets. For example, echo The curly brackets or brace expansion is a useful instrument in the hands of system administrators. You can at one go create multiple directories data-wise and perform backup operations. In this example, the range of alphabets gets attached to the string after the closing brackets. For example, echo curly bracket a dot dot z. You can see how the expansion takes place. Enter. You can save a lot of time and avoid errors if you use curly bracket expansions. If you must save logs or account files date-wise for a month, imagine the time spent in creating 31 directories for the month of January. This tiresome process can be accomplished by a single command using brace expansion. Let us try it. Clear the screen. MKDIR for creating a directory. Curly brackets 1, 31, Jan 2020. You see the directories created here. Let us create a proper view. All the directories are created in the range. You can, we have just used the ls command to do so. While the example you have so far seen are range based, singular or desperate items can also be used in brace expansions using comma delimiter. For example, clear the screen, echo, curly bracket, C, S, M. Close the curly bracket, AT. Items in this non-range examples are expanded with the string outside the closing bracket. Performing mathematical calculation is also possible to some extent in the bash shell using the following constructs. Let us do a multiplication example. Echo dollar square bracket 2 into 5. Note the use of the square brackets. Another example to do a sum of Numbers, echo, dollar, square bracket, 100 plus 10. You can also use the ordinary brackets, but for conformity, more square bracket examples would be used. You can add this to the variable using the following construct mechanism. Add, which will be the variable, dollar hundred plus hundred let us check the value of the variable add here you go thank you hello and welcome to section four introduction in this section the topics are and and or operators passing values to a script at runtime if then else constructs file testing operators, string testing operators, arithmetic operators. Operators are enablers to perform a comparison between two or more entities in the shell environment. Thank you. And and or operators. It is important to understand the meaning of a string and a pattern. A string is a sequence of alphanumerical characters that are either constants that do not change or values of a variable that may change. A pattern is a repeated occurrence of a string having wildcard characters. Regular expressions often employ patterns. The AND and OR are operators that are used to control the logic of true and false conditions. 
The AND operator allows execution if the first command is true. Otherwise, the second command is not allowed to execute. Let us go over to a lab. Usage of AND and OR operators. Let us create a file called test1 using the touch command. Here goes. Now let us execute this command ls minus l test1 the AND operator echo hello world. The command had two commands separated by the AND operator because the first command succeeded because we had created the file test1. The second command got executed, hello world. But what happens if the first command fails? Let us delete the file test1 using the command rm test1. Let us run the same command. Because the first command fails, the second command, that is echo hello world, is just ignored. It can also be explained that the first command returns a non-zero value showing an error. The second command fails. The second command runs only if the first command returns an exit status of zero, implying success. The OR operator is the exact opposite of the AND operator. The first command must fail or return a value other than zero for the second command to succeed. Remember that we had deleted the file test1. Now using the OR operator, pipe pipe, let us see what happens. Clear the screen. This is the command that we used and instead of the AND operator, we used the OR operator, double pipe. The second command executes, a bit like the parallel universe in the strange things, but not evil. Thank you. Passing values to a script at runtime. Values can be passed to the script at runtime. Runtime is the state of an executing process. The values must be delimited by a space after the name of the script. So let us go ahead and create a script in the lab. I've already created some files and given them execute permission, vis1, o to go to the next line, echo my hello, my name is dollar dollar one, save the file. If you execute the file or the script, Simply without offering an argument, the response is Hello, my name is blank. But if you put an argument that must be separated by a space, then that argument becomes the value of the positional parameter $1. This is the $1. And when you execute the script, the value is displayed. Here in this example, in the following example, the first argument is Lisa right after the name of the script. So, S1 and the argument Lisa. So let us see the output. Now you see, hello, my name is Lisa. So Lisa is the value of the positional argument $1. You can have up to nine positional parameters let us make a simple change in the script to accommodate a second argument with the use of the positional parameter $2. Let's open another script. O echo hello my name is $1 echo hello my surname is $2. Save the file. I think I got the spelling of the surname incorrect, sorry. Now run the script with the following two arguments, Lisa and Nobel. S2, Lisa, the first argument, 
and the second argument. Let us see the output. So hello, my name is Lisa. My surname is Nobel. Thank you. Welcome back. We are still in passing values to a script at runtime. You can also accommodate Linux commands by using backticks that you learned in the section of command substitution. Let us look at this file. vi s3 o let us add this line echo today's date is dollar one that is positional parameter dollar one. Let us run the date command. You have the date command output, Saturday, January 11, the time and the IST and the year. The Linux command must be run with backticks if you are putting it as an argument to a script. So, S3 backtick date backtick. Let us see the output. Today's date is Saturday. Actually, this is not the expected result. Where did the rest of the command go? In such situations, the double quotes which you have learned earlier should be used so that separate components of the date command output are turned into one literal string. So let us use the double quotes. Here, along with the back ticks, double quote here and double quote here. Let us look at the output. We get the correct output. Let's clear the screen. Another positional parameter is $0. What does it do? It returns the name of the script. Let us study the following script. VIS5 O The name of the script Sorry, echo The name of the script is $0. We can just run the script as five. We don't need an argument because the argument is the name of the script. Because dollar zero is the name of the script. As you see, this is what dollar zero is substituted for. Thank you. If then else constructs. The if is a conditional construct that is used to control the flow of the script. It is a decision-making tool that uses the return value of code to perform or not to perform a specified task. It has innumerable applications in the Linux world because it checks files, attributes of files, various parameters in the system, variables, sets paths depending upon condition that you specify in the script. The syntax of if then else is if condition statement, then execute this piece of code. Else, you execute this piece of code. This conditional statement depends if it is true or false. If it is true, then this piece of code is executed. If it is false, then this particular piece of code is executed. The syntax of if then elif, which stands for else if, and can be used with the main if block. If condition statement 1 then this piece of code is executed if condition statement 1 is 0 or true then there is the second condition condition statement 2 this piece of code is executed if condition 2 returns 0 or true else this code section is executed if condition statement 1 returns a non-zero or false value, then it is terminated with fi. Thank you. We continue with the if-then-else construct elements. Now it is the proper time to learn about the read and echo commands. You can use the read command to read input from the command prompt. Let's open a file. The first line is of course the command interpreter. Press O to go to the next line. Let us enter the following statements. Echo. Please enter your name. The second statement. Read name. Read is the command. The name is the variable. 
the third statement echo hello dollar name this is the variable how are you double quotes save the file let us execute the file it waits for you to enter the input so let me put my name we get the following statement as you can see the formatting looks confusing and the way to format is to enable the echo command backslash commands using the minus e flag followed by various formatting commands starting with back backslash so echo minus e and then you have to give a backslash command now look at the table the backslash a is the bell sound backslash b backspace backslash n new line backslash r carriage return backslash v vertical tab backslash f form feed so let us add the echo command minus e backslash n for the new line we open the same file and here we enter i echo minus e double quotes backslash n let us save the file now you can see the previous output now just check what is the current output enter my name see the difference so the output has a new line after the name and this is known as line feed thank you example of if then else elif script in this script three variables name one name two name three are defined with constant values of lisa john peter respectively then you ask for input which is saved in a variable called dollar name look at the line read space name then the value of the variable name is compared with the constants in a ladder elif formation if there is any name other than lisa john or peter i mean if you input any name other than lisa john or peter the condition fails which means that it returns a non zero value and echoes the statement best of luck this is an example of nested if conditional because of the presence of multiple elif statements check the placement of then this is done to make readability better so that you can distinguish between if blocks in this case of course there is only one if block between the beginning if and terminating fi let us open the file look at the first if statement if dollar name 1 equals dollar name remember dollar name is what you input then this statement echo hi name 1 congrats you admitted to the class x executed let us see this in action clear the screen input i put my name and you see hi lisa congrats you admitted the class is echoed back but if you put another name then the condition becomes false and then the else statement is executed let us try it again put some other name sorry best of luck next time thank you string testing operators a string is a series of alphanumeric characters and very few operators work on the strings which are minus z it is zero or success if the string is empty minus n is zero or success if the string is not empty comparison string operators string a space equal to operator string b is zero or success if the strings are same string a negation operator equal to operator string b is zero or success if the strings are not same now let us look at the following script the first line is of course the command interpreter 
echo enter your name and then press enter whatever you enter becomes the value of the variable name here the purpose of the script is to find if a user has not entered anything if the user enters his or her name it is evaluated using the minus n operator you can see the line minus n space dollar name but if the user enters enter or nothing then he or she is informed that nothing has been entered because the empty value is evaluated with the minus z operator let us now execute the script clear the screen enter your name and then press enter if you enter something then it becomes the value of the variable dollar name and then it will be evaluated by the string operator minus n so i enter and the output is hello lisa let us clear the screen run the script again and this time we are not going to enter anything because then the string becomes empty which will be evaluated by the minus z operator so i just press enter and you have not entered anything thank you this is a scenario based lab using string evaluation on two different operating systems in this lab you would learn to ensure that your script runs on two operating systems while bash is common there are some unique files across different operating systems. In this scenario, you would write a script that identifies whether your operating system is the one that is supported by the software that your company is trying to sell. This software runs on Ubuntu and not on CentOS. So your script runs a sort of a sanity check. Let us look at the script. The first line is, of course, the command interpreter. OS is a variable that has Linux commands in backticks. The first command reads a system file called issue that tells you the name of the operating system. This file exists only in Ubuntu operating system. The cut command slices characters 1 to 6 from the output of the first command. Next is the check variable which is valued to the first command that reads a file called red hat minus release from the etc directory. The cut command again slices characters 1 to 6 from the first command. Now let us go to the code. If $OS is equal to Ubuntu, then you have your echo back, hooray, your supported OS. Else you get echo, sorry you are not on supported OS, please use Ubuntu and the script terminates. Let us run the script on center's operating system. Sorry you are not on supported OS, please use Ubuntu. This is correct and expected. Let us see what happens when you run the same script on Ubuntu operating system. Right now we are in Ubuntu. Let us check the content of the file issue in the etc directory. This tells you the name of the operating system Ubuntu 16.04. Let us run the script. Clear the screen. While the script successfully identifies the OS, there is an error message that is undesirable and unprofessional. I'm talking about this error message. You need to suppress this error by redirecting the error using two greater than sign. Note that the file slash etc slash red hat minus release does not exist in Ubuntu. Hence the error message serves no useful purpose. In such cases, the error should go to Linux's famous black hole, the directory, or sorry, the file slash dev slash null. So the script would look like look at the extra so any error from this 
particular file which we saw here as an error is redirected to the dev null file. Now let us run this file. So you no longer see the error message. Thank you. Arithmetic operators. The operators that facilitate mathematical functions and comparisons between two integers are as follows. Minus eq, success or zero if two integers are same. Minus ne, success if two integers are not same. Minus le, success if the first integer is less or equal to the second integer. Minus ge, success or zero if the first integer is greater or equal to the second integer. Minus ld, success or zero if the first integer is less than the second integer. Minus gt, success or zero if the first integer is greater than the second integer. Understanding Arithmetic Operators In this script, the answer is quizzed to be 12 with anything less than 12 is taken care by the conditional dollar price less than 11 and any price more by the conditional dollar price greater than 13. The first line is of course the command interpreter. Then there's the echo statement which asks you to guess a number. What you input becomes the value of the variable price. If the value of the price is less than 11, you get the output the price is too low. And any value greater than 13, you get the output the price is too high. Only and only if you enter 12, then the conditional for that part of the code becomes true and you win. Note that there are no else statements, only else if. This script does not serve any practical purpose apart from helping you to learn the concepts. Now let us run the script. Guess the price of the ticket to win a free ticket. Let us input a price less than 11. The price is too low. Clear the screen. Let us input a price greater than 13, any, any number. The price is too high. Now, let us input 12. You win. Thank you. Hello and welcome. In this section, we will learn about real-world scenarios. We will focus on the path variable and using shell scripting in the RC directory. Thank you. Real-world scenarios. Here, you would learn about few topics that would help you as a Linux administrator, would also assist you if you have anything to do with Linux. You must have admin privileges. Do not try anything on live production systems. Create your own infrastructure. Path variable. You may have noticed that I run the file using the dot slash indicator, which indicates that the bash scripts are executed from the current directory. This is actually very inconvenient. It is better to add the directory in the path variable so that the scripts can run from any location on your system. Path is an environment variable, a predefined variable. Capitalization of path variable is a convention. Now, let us check the value of the path variable in this environment. Echo path. You see a list of directories like user local bin, user bin, user local s bin, user s bin, home lisa, dot local slash bin, home lisa. This are a list of directories del delimited with columns. What it really means that any executables found in this list of directories can be executed from any location on the system. Software companies like to give their customers files that can be sourced. This source file is nothing but bash script. The source file is what companies 
provide to customers who buy their software to set the path of the software on the customer's local environment. Let us look at such a file. The first line is of course the command interpreter. The second line has a variable called scripts which is valued to the path where the company software for example are existing. The next line is a conditional with minus V flag that checks for the existence of the path variable on the environment and then echoes series of statements like the variable path exists modifying the path variable sleeps for one second and then adds this path to the existing path variable on the local environment. So let us source this file and see what happens to the path variable. Okay, now let us check the path variable and check if it has been modified by this script. Yes, it has been modified by the script. Thank you. Using shell scripting in the RC directory. Every Linux system has a run level. It is the state at which the present instance of Linux runs. You can determine the current run level by using the run level or who minus r command. Please note that I am logged in as root. Let us run the run level command. It shows that it is 5, run level 5. Run levels are associated with rc.d directories in the slash etc folder. So let us go over to the slash etc rc.d directory. The RC stands for run command and each directory is associated with the run level. Since our current run level is 5, our concentration would be in the slash etc slash RC 5 dot D. Please note that exhaustive coverage of RC is beyond the scope of this course. The run level 5 is where the Linux instance runs as a multi-user level network enable graphical mode layer. The run level concept is derived from system 5 philosophy is giving away to system D and the modern operating systems do have it only for backward compatibility. The first background process that Linux starts is the init process. The kernel starts it as it initiates the daemon from the slash sbin directory. The init process then reads its configuration file slash etc slash init tab file. The file init tab contains the information which run level the system is to start. If you want to place your script that you want to execute when the system starts or restarts, the place to put it is slash init slash init dot d directory. This directory, which is the repository or the point where all the scripts such scripts are stored. Let us look at the file that we are going to store. Let us understand the file. This script has the conditional check if the file eLinks is executable and if true executes the eLink program and dumps the redirected output to home lisa directory which is my home directory. Please remember eLinks is a command line browser just like Netscape or Internet Explorer or Chrome. So, look at the script. If minus x slash user slash bin elinks, then execute elinks www.google.com and redirect it to home lisa slash google.txt and then we finish off the file. Now, let us go to the init.d directory. I have already copied the file. Now, let me give it permission 0755. This permission is to execute and it is provided for the user, members of the group and the whole world. Now we have to go to the slash etc rc.5 directory, the directory corresponding to the run level 5. 
remember, and create a symbolic link using the command. ln minus s init.d, the name of the file, and the symlink s12 elinks, where s stands for start, and the 12 should be the number the process starts after other process which are similarly numbered. Now we have to reboot the system and log in as the user and check the slash home lisa directory for the file google.txt whether it's present in the home directory or not. Thank you. Welcome to section introduction. In this section you will learn about the for loop, the while loop, case statement and also learn about special variables such as dollar hash dollar ambassand and the command base name. Thank you. For loop. Looping is a scripting construct used for reinforcing the same action on multiple items. This is called iteration. It takes place by using a temporary variable that gets assigned values one at a time from a list of items for specific tasks. The syntax is as follows. For then there's a temporary variable, which is a placeholder, in, followed by list. The temporary variable will assume the values in the list and then perform task after do. Then you finish off the script by done. Understanding for looping. Check the script below. For i in banana, apple, pear, do the following actions. Echo dollar i echo double quotes double quotes which just inserts a line empty line sleep one and then done so the variable i assumes the value of banana apple and pear but remember it does not hop from banana to apple what it does is that it traverses the whole cycle or loop of echo dollar i empty line ins insertion by echo double quotes double quotes and sleep one for one second of pause each time it assumes the value of fruits in the list. Now let us run the script. Here is the script. Let us execute it. Banana, apple, pear. Thank you. Lap if conditional with looping. Consider the following script. In this script, which you can use to backup files, you have to provide the name of the directory, which is taken care by these two statements. The files variable is a list of files with .sh extension in the current location or in the current directory. The variable $i is to assume the value of each file with the extension .sh. In the first conditional, a directory is created. This is the conditional. A directory is created, presuming it is not already there. Because you see, the value of directory is $dir. This is the directory that you provide. So if this directory is not there, you can see the negation operator minus d flag which checks if a directory is not there if a directory is there then it is successful but we are reversing it using the negation operator so if the directory is not present in the current directory it will go ahead and create a directory but if the directory is already there the loop will fail and th this following statement will come into force which will copy the files with dot sh extension to the directory. Let us see it in action. Now let us run the script. Here is the script. Clear the screen. So we already have some .sh files. The objective of the script is to see if the files with .sh extension are copied into the directory that we have created through the script. 
Let us run the script now. Let us provide the name of a directory. Done. Let us check if this directory has the .sh files. And we do have the .sh files in the directory. So the script is successful. Thank you. In this script, the looping method employs the ping command to determine the status of remote hosts. Ping is a networking command, available on all operating systems that have TCP IP stack and is used to determine whether the remote system, or for that matter any device that has an IP address, is alive or not. It is useful to determine if there is a networking problem or the remote system is dead or alive. Coming to the script, IP is the variable that assumes the value of three IP addresses in the list 8.8.8, 8.844, and 10.10.10. While 8.8.88 and 8.844 are well known as public Google DNS servers. I have used 10.10.10.10 for a dummy run knowing that the ping command would never get a response and we get to see the packet loss result in the script output. So for the first looping, IP assumes the value of the first element in the list, that is 8.8.8, .8 and uses the ping command to send a packet once, as shown by the flag minus C1, which stands for count of 1. Grep searches the output of the ping command for the pattern packet loss, while the cut command gives you the third field, as you can see from minus F3, field 3, and the delimiter is comma. Run the ping command to understand this. The script will go through all the three IP addresses, and then we can see the result practically. Time to run the script. Let us clear the screen. As we can see from the output, 8.8.8 .8 has zero packet loss which means it is alive and has responded to the ping command. 8.844 also has zero packet loss and has responded to the ping command which was sent through the script, while 10.10.10 has 100% packet loss, as we know, because 10.10.10 is a dummy IP address. Thank you so much. While loop. The while loop provides more granular control over the looping mechanism depending upon the state of the condition. If the condition is true, the loop continues to run, but when the condition becomes false, the loop stops. The while loop must use counter clocks, of which there are few techniques. This is the syntax of the while loop. While condition is true, do run the code, and when the code is finished, done. The code will only run till the condition is true. When the condition becomes false, the code will stop running. The while loop is synonymous with a counter that makes condition to become false and then stops the loop. There are several kinds of counters used in while looping. For instance, one type of counter mechanism uses bash inherent arithmetic capabilities and the other uses the command expr. So let us go ahead and learn about counters. Lab bash counter. Define a variable with a value of 100. Variable sum is equal to 100. Now use the positive counter in the following format to increment it by 1. Sum equal to dollar bracket bracket dollar sum plus 1. Now let us check the value of the sum variable. It is 101. Increment by 1. Now let us define another variable with a value of 10. Num 10. Now define a negative counter that decrements it by 1. Num 
dollar variable minus one. Now let us check the value of num, it should be nine. It is nine. Thank you. Counter using expr command. Another method is to use the expr command. Let us define a variable to a value five. Variable number equal to five. Now we have to define an equation using the expr command. Check the placement of backticks to use the command, the output of which is the value for the variable number. Number equal to backtick expr dollar number, which we have defined it as 5, plus 1. Close it by a backtick. Now, let us check the value of the number variable, echo number. It is 6, so it has increased by 1. Now, let us run the equation again and check the value of the variable. It is 7 now. While loop in scripts will iterate the body of the code which has this equation until a, the condition becomes false, following which the loop will stop running. This is the essence of the while looping. Lab, a simple while loop script. Now, consider the script below. A variable num is set to 100 along with a conditional stating that $num is greater than 0. This is true because 100 is greater than 0. So, while 100 is greater than 0, the body of the loop that is echo $num, echo double quote double quote which inserts a line, sleep 1 which pauses for 1 second and a counter. So, the body of the code echoes the value of the variable, but the counter decrements the value of 100 by 1 on each loop, so that when the condition reaches a state where $num becomes less than 0, that is minus 1, the loop condition becomes false and ends the loop. Now, let us run the script. Here is the script. Now, let us run it. Look what happens. 100, 99, 98, it decreases by 1 on each loop. So I'll take the video forward so that we see the end of the loop. So we have reached the end of the loop. Thank you. Understanding special variables dollar hash, dollar ambassand, and the command base name. In the following lab, you would learn about special variables and a command extensively used in scripts. This topic is rarely covered, yet real-life scripts routinely incorporate these special variables and the command base name. To understand the special variables, let us open this script. The first line is of course the command interpreter. The second line indicates echo $1,$2,$3,$4,$5, which expects five arguments after the script name. They are nothing but positional parameters that we have studied earlier. Now let us go over to the next line, echo the number of arguments after the script name is dollar hash. So the dollar hash counts the arguments after the script name and displays it on the standard output. And this variable is called dollar hash. Coming over to the next line, echo the name of the script is base name dollar zero. The base name command followed by the dollar zero, dollar zero is of course the script name strips of the script name of details like absolute, relative or current path. Coming over to the last variable, last special variable, dollar ambassand. 
This special variable saves the argument after the script name in a list in, a, in the memory which can be copied to a file. As you can see, it is being redirected from the memory. Whatever arguments you put after the script name, it is redirected to a file called current.txt. Now, let us execute the script. As you know, the script expects five arguments. So let us put chow tata by hello sayonara. As you can see, it has displayed the five arguments. Dollar hash has counted the arguments after the script name. The base name command has put the name of the script and stripping it of the absolute or relative paths and the dollar ambassador has copied the arguments which it had saved in the memory into the file and it is displaying the output of the file here. Thank you. A case statement is also a conditional. It is useful in creating menus or a startup scripts for applications. A value is matched against a series of patterns. The conditional then executes a code upon a match or just ignores and moves to the next pattern to match. The case statement has the following syntax. Variable is equal to hello. You either get the value of hello in various forms like you input it or it is the output of a Linux command or it is just a menu. If the value of the variable hello matches pattern 1 then this code block is executed. If there is no match, the case statement matches the value of the variable to pattern 2. And if there is a match, then this code block is executed. If there is no match, it goes to the next pattern and so on. If the value of the variable hello does not match any pattern in the script, then it goes to the garbage bin which is represented by this star. And then you terminate the script by using the mirror opposite of case, ESAC. Thank you. Lab, a case statement script to determine run level. Run level is a Linux command that tells you which mode your system is running on. Let us execute the run level command. It is 5, which means that the system has started in run level 5 in graphical mode. So here is a script that gives you information what run levels mean. The output of run level is fed to a awk command, which simply extracts the field 2 or the column 2, which becomes the value of the RL variable. The number as a value of the variable RL is matched against the options 1, 2, 3 and 5. Let us execute the script. Here is the script. Now let us execute it. Linux has started normally in graphical mode. Let us look at the script again. So as we know the run level command output was 5 and $RL was matched to this pattern and which ran this piece of code, echo Linux has started normally in graphical mode. Thank you. A PO menu using case statement. This menu shows how quickly you can create such scripts. This menu is for the human resources department to decide the salary structure of prospective employees. The script is long, so I have divided it into sections. The first section. The first line is of course the command interpreter. This section helps the user to select the initial for each grade. E for engineering, T for technical, C for clerical and I for interns. Second section. Sleep 1, pause for 1 second. Echo, enter grade initial. Then the user enters the initials E, 
T, C or I hopefully, which becomes the value of the variable grade, which is then matched to pattern E or small e. The pipe symbol acts like an OR operator and even if you enter small e, the pattern will be matched. So if someone keys E, the code, the maximum salary you can offer is $35,000 is executed. If the user inputs T or small t, the pattern E or small e is ignored and the code, the maximum basic salary you can offer is $29,000 is executed. Now for section 3. If the user inputs anything other than E, T, C, I or its smaller forms, then this piece of code is executed which tells the user it is a wrong response and to try again. Now let us execute this script. Here is the script. Let us now execute it. Select the initial of the grade. So let us select E. The maximum base salary you could offer is 35,000. So it is executing as expected. Clear the screen. Let us now enter T. The maximum basic salary you can offer is $29,000. And now let us input something which is not E, T, C or I. Say you. Wrong response. Try again. Thank you.